How can you design a really effective and practical evening routine or bedtime routine that will help you to get to sleep really easily every single night? Hi there, my name is Beatrix Schmidt from the sleepdeepmethod.com. As a sleep coach and speaker, I get asked about bedtime routines or evening routines all the time. But more generally, this channel is all about helping you to overcome insomnia, overcome sleep-related problems and achieve really great night's sleep every single night. So if you're interested in practical tips and advice, hit the subscribe button below and come back each week when I share more practicalities to help you improve your sleep and really be able to get good amount of energy during the day. If you find it hard to get to sleep at night, uh, initially get to sleep at night, I'm sure that you have read articles about how to design the perfect bedtime routine for you or read different suggestions of what to do sort of the 30 to 40 minutes before going to bed to make sure that you can drift off to sleep really fast. And some of the things that I want to clear up first before we go into the practicalities of a bedtime routine is a couple of things that I come across with uh, clients quite a lot initially when I start working with them. So the first thing is that People want to aim for perfection and they put things in place that might not actually relate to them as a person or to their personality type. So as an example, I often hear from uh, individuals that um, they try to go to sleep at 10 o'clock. Now, the reason they, you know, they try to go to sleep is because they might have read an article about making sure that you go to bed early enough and generally what's suggested it, it's 10 o'clock. But most of the times, the clients that I come across with don't quite fit into that 10 o'clock bedtime. And even me personally, I don't go to bed that early, but it does not make me a night owl. So when we're looking at um, bedtime routines or evening routines and going to bed, picking a time that actually realistically works with what you have going on in your life. So instead of 10 o'clock, would it be more like 11? So the first thing here is really picking the right time for you to get to sleep based on your personality and your sleep preferences. The second part of designing a really effective uh, bedtime routine for you personally is really looking at first of all what you're currently doing within sort of the 30 to 45 minutes prior to going to sleep. And what I mean going to sleep, it does not mean going to bed. Because if you go to bed and you spend another half an hour, for example, reading a book, then you need to look at it a different way. So let's look at literally going backwards from going to sleep. So whatever that might be for you, I trust that you will pick that uh, time frame well, because it's really important for us to look at the right time frame before sleep. So what I want you to look at is you can pause the video if you want or do this exercise after is looking at what are those things that you do before you go to sleep and this could be for example reading in bed for 20 minutes this could be perhaps brushing your teeth taking your makeup off um, if you do wear makeup uh, obviously it could be something like um, having a shower maybe wrapping up your to-do list whatever those things are prior to sleep because that is what you're currently thinking you're doing to promote good sleep. Wrapping up the last thing on your to-do list in your head might be a great idea but it could actually trigger a lot of those emotions or stresses that will stop you being able to sleep at night. Before we move on to the other sections of this video let's pause here because what I want you to do is be able to establish what are the things that are already working for you and what are the things that might not be working for you. So I would love to hear from you. Let me know what are the things you think are working for you when it comes to your evening routine or simply transitioning from your daytime to your sleep and what are the things that might not be working really well for you. So use the comment box below and let me know some of those things that might be working and might not be working so I can help you and maybe even answer some of the questions that you have around this big topic of an evening and bedtime routine to prepare for sleep. A really big part of an evening routine is consistency. 
If you think about it this way, your brain and your body needs to completely understand what you are doing in sequence so that you can then guarantee the sleep um, and falling into sleep really easily. So this is one of the things that I talk about with my clients all the time because when I work with clients, we really focus on training your body and your mind to be able to recognize those signals so that it can get into sleep in a really easy way. And initially this process can be sort of the 30 minutes to 45 minutes. But in my example, because I've been practicing a lot of these practicalities, it's probably about a 20, 15 to 20 minute process because my body and my brain truly and completely understands what is about to happen, which is going to sleep and sleeping. So I think uh, when you look at your evening routine and putting together something that will work for you for years to come, is looking at how can you train your brain and your body, and this is why I'm saying training, so that it can recognize those signs before going to bed and before going to sleep. And if you think about it this way, then you can really start focusing on developing those skills rather than randomly and miraculously these things happen and you know, you're just going to sleep and falling asleep. When you consciously have the process in place, you'll be able to make sure and guarantee that process will work for you every single night, night after night. The last part of designing a super effective evening routine for yourself is looking at the evening routine and um, the different sections that you might need to put in place. And again, I don't know what your situation with your sleep is, so I'm giving you an overall bigger picture of how to design this evening routine, but your situation might be quite different to this big picture. So the first thing to bear in mind is physical preparation for bed. And this could be either having a shower, maybe not too hot, but warm enough for you to cleanse and, and get ready for bed, changing into your pyjamas, for example, that could be a really great way for the body and the mind to know that this is time for bed. And another way to prepare physically would be uh, maybe not eating or drinking something too late. Because again, when you eat late, your body is focusing on digesting rather than actually preparing physically for sleep. The second part is emotional. So how can you emotionally prepare for sleep? And this is dealing with any of those negative emotions, uh, perhaps disagreements, uh, arguments that happen during the day. So you're not taking that to bed with you and then thinking about them in bed while you're actually doing your best to get to sleep, but those emotions rise up. This could be the same with positive emotions, so not taking all those positive emotions into bed with you as well. And the third part is mental preparation. Not worrying about how you're going to sleep, but actually going to bed with, with the thought of, you know what, even if I might not get to sleep straight away, at least I'm resting. That could be a great way for you to mentally take that pressure off and just enjoying the rest in your bed rather than getting frustrated perhaps. So this is the kind of uh, last pillar of how you can actually design that really great bedtime routine for you to guarantee sleep for many, guarantee good sleep for many years to come. Did you like this video? If you did, hit the like button below, subscribe to my channel and share it with a friend or family member who wants to put together a really effective bed bedtime routine for themselves. And remember, overcoming sleep problems, overcoming insomnia takes time. So be patient with yourself because what you can do is going to bed with a peace of mind rather than getting frustrated and annoyed because you might not be able to get to sleep. So this is a great way for you to approach the bedtime routine itself and develop all the skills around sleeping really well at night.